Hey there, Nick with CC Minis here, and today I'm going to share with you nine tips to get your Warhammer army onto the tabletop as fast as possible. And I'll show you how I use my pop pop paint technique to paint up this 2,000 point army in just 10 hours. All right, let's do this. When the new Soulblight book came out, I knew I wanted to play them, and I needed to get an army together as quickly as possible. Which brings me to tip number one: start with an elite army. I started out with as few models as possible for this army. Now I'm not going to bore you with the details of the list, but I chose a sub-faction that allows me to take some pretty expensive models as battle line, so my army will have a relatively low model count. This style of army may not be what I want to play long term, but it's the quickest way to get them battle ready, so I can figure out the parts of the army I want to use by actually seeing what they are like on the tabletop, and not just going over hypotheticals in my head. Now there are definitely some speedy ways to paint up a horde army, and don't worry, we'll, we'll cover those techniques in a future video. But the fewer models you got with the pop-pop technique, the quicker you're gonna get them done. Okay, the elite list is all here. Now, how are we gonna paint all of this in 10 hours? Well, let me tell you about tip number two, the reference model. A few months ago, I painted up this skeleton as a 30 minute challenge. So I knew if I used the same paint scheme on this army, I could knock it out pretty fast. Using a painted model as reference is always a great idea to start out a Warhammer army. It gives you the opportunity to plan out all the different steps. So you can paint your army quickly without stopping to figure out which color to use or what parts of the project you're gonna tackle next. And you can even do this with models that you didn't paint. If there's a really cool mini that you've seen online and you can mentally figure out all the different ways to replicate it quickly, well, that's fair game. Now before painting as fast as possible, I gotta lay down some ground rules. We are only gonna count the time painting the models. These models are already based in Prime, so that's not gonna count. And we aren't gonna track the time to mix up paint concoctions or clean up messes or any of those sort of in-between steps. I'm not painting the army in 10 hours straight. I got a full-time job, a kid, so that kind of time spend just ain't gonna happen. But I am gonna try to complete these over the course of a week so I can get these out for my upcoming league game. Now, no matter what kind of paint job you chose for your army, we're gonna wanna follow tip number three, base coat as fast as possible. And with the pop pop painting technique, we're gonna do this with an airbrush. All right, stop right there. I know, I just, I just said the dirty word, airbrush. But I have an airbrush alternative that I'll cover in a bit. That's super easy, super cheap, like cheaper than regular brushes, and super fast. Just not as fast as an airbrush. I know, painting with an airbrush is basically cheating. But man, I'm gonna need all the cheats and painting hacks there are so I can get through these models in just 10 hours. I started with Payne's Gray, the most darkest bluish of the 50 shades. This is a nice dark nightly blue, which will set the tone for the army, and took about 52 minutes to complete. I want the whole army to feel like it's at night, being illuminated from below by lava. And to achieve the overall nighttime feel, we're going to do a Xenothal coat of faded ultramarine from above, making these spooky boys look like they are dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight, and adding another 45 minutes to the project. Then I brought out a nice dark red color to hit the lava patches and start building up a quick dirty glow from below. This is the key to the pop pop painting technique. We're going to try to envelop the whole model in two opposing light sources. This way we can just worry about the form of the model and not get caught in the trap of picking individual colors for every single detail. The first light is already taken care of with a nighttime look. So all we gotta do is make this lava glow and doing so is surprisingly easy if you follow two simple rules. The first rule is if you can draw a straight line from any part of the glowing object to a part of the mini, that part would get hit by the light. Basically, you gotta check for line of sight. The second rule is the further from the object or longer our imaginary line is, the less the light will affect it and the dimmer the light would be. Which is even more important when you bring on your actual glow color, in this case a much brighter red. I'm super careful with this and make sure that I only focus on the parts of the model that are closest to the lava. This particular red, Pyrrole Red from Procryl, is perfect for the pop-pop technique due to its brightness and intense saturation. Since we really only have two colors on these models, it's important that at least one of them really pops off the table. Maybe seeing how quickly you can get this kind of thing done with an airbrush is making you interested in trying them out. And there is a really inexpensive option out there that's like a compressor airbrush wombo combo. And it's portable. You know what? I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and order that. Let's check it out together to see if it's any good. We'll get to that when it comes in. In like, well, like five, 10 minutes. Cool. One thing I want to saturate as much as possible with the red is the lava on these bases. Oh, you're probably a little curious on how I made these, aren't you? Bonus tip, speed round. Stupid easy bases. Now, I'm not going to count how long it takes to make these in total, 
because I didn't time it, but here's how to make some easy bases in no time at all. In fact, I can explain the process to you in just 10 words. Get bases. Glue on rocks. Slap down goop. Textured goop. That's basically it. There's a simple base for you. Some hot glue gun goop was used to make the lava. That looks like fresh and flowing as opposed to a more craggly type of lava. The lava was added on just to spice things up a bit and give an on-screen reason for the pop pops baked in OSL. Speaking of goops though, we need to talk about Tip number four, know your mediums. There are a boatload of different liquids and goops you can add to your paint to make them act a little bit or a lot differently. You're probably familiar with Flow Improver, the thing that everybody's adding to their airbrush to thin their paints and keep their tips from getting dry. No one wants a dry tip. It works because Flow Improver slows down the drying time of paint. On the other hand, you got airbrush thinner, which does exactly what it says, but also makes the paint dry quicker. This is helpful for some types of paint, but not super useful for many painting. What I want to introduce you to today is Flow Improver's lesser known sibling, Retarder. This stuff increases the drying time even more than Flow Improver. I'm going to mix up a paint slurry starting with this stuff, followed by some paint. The bottle says to use at least one part Retarder to every six parts paint, so keep that in mind when you're mixing a concoction of your own. Lastly, I added in a juicy squirt of water to taste. I'll throw a link to the retarder I use down in the description if you want to check it out. Amazon affiliate link. You don't pay more, I get a small commission. You know the drill. The dry time of this stuff compared to regular acrylics is slow, which is perfect as long as you use a big brush. We can mix in all the dry, slowing mediums we want, but what's the point if we have to keep going back to our paint to reload our brushes? Yeah, we're gonna need a bigger brush. Bigger. Bigger. Come on, bigger. Bigger. Okay, that one was a little too big. Let's let's take it down a notch. It's a shame that most paintbrushes marketed for minis are well, so many. Using a large brush like this will save a lot of time. Going back to the palette over and over again to reload your brush. Keep in mind that after you load your giant brush up, you're gonna need to remove some of the excess by pushing it ever so slightly against the paper towel. You see this right here, like a like a puddle on the brush. Keep pushing until that like disappears and you're good to go. I use the giant brush to do some sloppy edges and highlights all over the red parts of the model. I'll throw an affiliate link to these hunky brushes down in the description too, by the way. Go wild. Using an orange, we can bump up the brightness up a step, but I'm not too big of a fan of the color's hue, so we'll be coming back to this in a bit. Consider this pre-highlighting for a future step. Just like when spraying the red paint initially, I keep in mind the distance between the lava and the mini, and try to highlight areas closer to the lava more, but also hit some of the more important parts of the model that I want to draw the eye to. This includes the classics, faces, swords, and boards, and a lot of spears. All in the orange highlighting was the longest step so far, bumping us up by over two and a half hours. All right, I gotta start speeding things up a bit more. I brought the retarder back out and whipped up a dull baby blue color, just a hair brighter than the blue OSL color. This is applied in the same manner using the big boy brush, but this time I focused on highlighting more traditionally, hitting the edges and top parts of the different forms around the model. This was another long session, adding in 79 minutes in total. But I did go way quicker with this compared to the orange. I just slapped some paint around. And that's all the edging and traditional highlighting that we're going to do on the army. I'm sure we could go in adding around dark metallics, painting in all those gems, or doing different colored horses. But all that takes just too much time and goes against tip number six, remove unnecessary steps. Sure, there are a few different steps I could have done to make these look better, like edge highlighting the red before orange, or doing a black wash after the light blue zenith. But we have less than three hours left, so taking out all those unnecessary details is the only way to save time. Speed painting is all about removing the unnecessary and getting things done fast. Getting them done now. And with a pop pop speed painting method, we just don't need those steps. All we need is some semi-convincing OSL, and we're good to go. Okay, I won't waste any more time on this one. It's time for tip number seven, don't be afraid of oils. Okay, yeah, oils are scary, dubious paints that don't mix with water. And I totally understand why people want to avoid them. But really, they ain't too bad. A uh, bit stinky though. I'll, I'll show you how they work. We're gonna make a simple oil wash to baste our vampires in. Start with a glass jar thing. Don't use plastic, it'll leak. I don't know how, but I tried it and it leaks. Even if it doesn't look like it's leaking, it'll leak. Just trust me, okay? 
glass. Then push out a nice honker of oil into the jar. Now pour in a little bit of Mona Lisa spirits. Okay, it's it's mineral spirits, but like, come on, she's, she's right there. By the way, wear some gloves while working with this stuff, and make sure you're in a nice, well-ventilated space. This stuff isn't the best for the old lung sponges. For the washer, we're going to want to add in about this much, a glug. You'll know if it's right when you start mixing it. If it's too thick, add another splash of Lisa juice. If it's too thin, squeeze out another bit of oil and mix it in. Yeah, I ruined a toothbrush for this shot. Amazon affiliate link down below. You don't pay more, I get commission. You know the drill. At the end, you want it to look like this or slightly thicker. It honestly doesn't matter much, and I'll show you why soon. Take the oily mess and just slather it all over your models. This washer is going to seek out and find all the nooks and crannies around your mini, making them nice and dark. When you're done, just rinse your brush in mineral spirits. I keep a small jar around with just those and use it to clean brushes until it gets like too much gunk in it. It'll float naturally to the bottom, so the stuff on top is okay to clean the brush with. Like, By the way, I separate all my oil and acrylic brushes so they don't mix and cross-contaminate mediums. I'm not sure if this is really necessary, but better safe than sorry. Sure, this wash made everything a bit too dark, so when I dried I took out a makeup sponge and dipped it into a bit of Mona Lisa's tears. I started rubbing it around where I wanted to remove that wash from. With the pop-pop technique, you don't even need to be careful with this step. Just let the sponge naturally take away the oils that are easy to reach. And let the stuff deep down in the recesses and texture stay there, nice and dark. All in all, the oil steps added about another hour and a quarter to the process. The wash took 39 minutes and the removal took 43. And remember, we're, we're not including dry time. That was about a day. Now you may notice the red has lost a lot of its vibrancy, even after removing the oil wash. This simply will not do. This is the pop pop paint technique and we need these to pop pop. Pop 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 when you see the Yeah, that was for you Dankway. To make that red really punchy, we're gonna use technique number eight, the sponge. This is a painting technique I see pop up every once in a blue moon, but not often enough. You're gonna to wanna to rip off a small piece of sponge. Grab some tweezers to hold a little bit easier, gently place it into some of the paint. Then smush the sponge onto paper until the mark it leaves behind is a bit thinner and not opaque. Once it's at that consistency, start giving your tiny soldiers some nice little pats. Show that you love them and you care about them enough to make them pop off the battle table. Just like with the airbrush, I'm only going to paint in the direction of the light and try to avoid smushing or scraping the sponge on the model. I try to go all over the model where I want it brighter first, then hit everything else. This way, when the first layer is down, I can go back into the closest parts and hit them again, building up that saturation and intensity even more. This whole step took about 35 minutes, which ain't bad at all, but at this point we're 9 hours in and things are starting to look kind of bleak for our goal of painting these all in 10 hours. Which brings us to our final tip. Tip number 9. Learn to let go. All through this process I wanted to make the lava look super cool. Well like hot, I mean it's lava, you know what I mean. But when I went and tried to paint on some like ridges and little striations like this stuff here, I just couldn't get it to work. I burned almost 10 minutes on this process and knew that even if I found a technique that I liked and looked cooler than this, I wouldn't have the time to do it on all these models and hit my goal. So I had to let go of that idea. This is the hardest part of speed painting. You know that you can paint better. You know that if you just sunk hours and hours into each mini, you could have the coolest looking force ever. And not putting 100% effort into these things feels wrong. Maybe it's perfectionism, maybe it's ego, maybe it's just too much comparing yourself to social media posts of people who are way better than you at painting. No matter what, the feeling is there and it's real. But it's wrong. There is no reason why you can't whip up an army as fast as possible. No one's going to look down on your army for not having the crispiest OSL or smoothest of blends. And any games you play with a painted army are going to be much more enjoyable than with an unpainted one. You can be proud of your speed painted army, even if you could have painted it better. It's okay. You can let go. You know what, I uh, kind of think I wrote this for me. Well, I hope you're getting something out of it too. Anyway, the portable air brush kit came in and it works pretty well so far. A bit weird since you can't control the air pressure, but the setting is at like 30 PSI, so right where you want it to be for mini painting anyway. And the brush is fine. It's got this weird thing where if you're just trying to spray the little idiotiest bit of paint, it kind of sputters. 
I don't really know how to describe it. I haven't got enough time with this to get a real feel for it yet. I'm a little bit worried about its longevity, so I can't really in good conscience recommend this at this point. If you want to know more info about it though, Ninjan has a whole video on it. I'll put a link to that down below. I used it to respray all the lava with some orange edges, then over it again with bright pyrrole red, covering up any oil spills or errant paint marks that happened throughout the process, giving it a super saturated finish. Last thing to do with just about 12 minutes left is to paint the rims. I did this all with the same paints gray as the first coat, to keep it all cohesive. Wow, I used almost a whole bottle of this stuff on the army. Crazy. Nice job, Vincy B. All right, the rims came in at 12 minutes and 53 seconds. Ah, darn, I missed my goal. Sorry for the uh, clickbait, I guess. Be sure to leave your hate comments right down there below. Anyway, here they are. My 2000 point pop pop speed painted soul blight gravelords army. In total, this army took me 10 hours and 23 seconds. Overall, I'm really happy with the way these look. My mind is going crazy with ideas for armies to paint and my other speed painting techniques. If you want to see some of those techniques on individual minis, you can check out that video right here. Huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate you all. Until next time, y'all, stay healthy and take care. Bye-bye. Wait, did you guys hear that?